Hey everybody, Jim here, coming to you once again from my palatial Tokyo apartment. Oh, so spacious. Um, drinking some coffee, as per usual, my favorite time of the day is always coffee time. Coffee time or beer time. Both of those are good. Usually one follows the other, so, you know, they're great. Have them in tandem. Beer at night, coffee in the day. Um, here with an old-fashioned pickups video. Good old-fashioned pickups video, just like when I was a youngin. Um, haven't done one of these in, like, a long time. Maybe, like, a year or so. Uh, mostly, uh, just because I haven't been picking up... Well, let me scratch that. Rewind. I've been picking up a lot of games, but most of them haven't been for me. Most of them have been either for, like, patrons or people who want to buy games from me. Uh, things like that, so I've been uh, pretty busy picking up and shipping out lots and lots of games over the past year or so um, But I do still buy play and collect games for myself and uh, Just for whatever reason I hadn't felt the need to do a pickups video until now um, the summer break uh, I'm uh, having right now a couple of weeks off from work So I went out I went way out west to Hamura to go to some hard-offs, which uh, I haven't been out there in a long time I haven't been doing a lot of hard offing for myself recently, um, but I went out there, found some cool games, and said, hey, what the hell, uh, let's do a pickups video. So we're going to take a look at uh, a bunch of the games I picked up recently and uh, have been playing and enjoying. Um, first up, though, uh, this was straight off of Amazon, uh, not retro at all, um, but I did pick up uh, Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD. Um, which I have already finished and uh, really enjoyed. I had beaten uh, the original on the Wii back in the day. I think that was actually the reason I bought a Wii to begin with, um, because I had tried Twilight Princess on the Wii after having already beaten it on the GameCube, and I was like, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Um, but I, I, you know, I can't miss out on a mainline Zelda game. Um, so Skyward Sword back in the day picked up a Wii to play Skyward Sword, enjoyed it. Hadn't played the game for like 10 years, uh, picked it back up, the HD version, and uh, enjoyed it uh, immensely. Um, I saw, you know, the motion controls you could do with uh, the Joy-Cons. I was like, F that. I'm, I'm, I don't want to do that. I'm far too lazy. Um, so I got my Pro Controller, and instead, you know, you just flick the, the right stick in whatever direction, and that's how you use your sword. And everything else, just use it like a nice standard controller, which is what I want. I'm not a huge fan of motion controls. Again, lazy. I play video games because I don't want to move around and do shit. I want to just push buttons and watch things happen. Um, but uh, Skyward Sword, uh, not everybody's favorite Zelda game. I can understand why. Um, especially like after you know playing through Breath of the Wild, which is you know big open world exploration, all that stuff. Going back and playing Skyward Sword again. Um, very linear game. It's much more story driven. It's much more um, about the dungeons and the puzzles and things like that than it is any kind of exploration. Because you can go back to, you know, um, you know, like Wind Waker or something like that. A big world to explore, you know. And then this sort of regresses back to no, it's all about the dungeons and the puzzles and things like that. And the uh, story. story is awesome. So um, I love this game. Even though I, I can see why it's not everyone's cup of tea, um, but now with the advent of being able to play it with uh, just a nice, you know, if you got a pro controller or something for your Switch, um, you don't have to play this with motion controls. And I think it's for me, it was more enjoyable without motion controls. Um, so played through it, enjoyed it, and I think you know this really got uh, got me in uh, the Zelda mood again. So I'm probably going to play through Breath of the Wild again in anticipation for the next game which hopefully is coming out next year, but yeah. Uh, Skyward Sword HD had quite a lot of fun with that, and uh, enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, the next game, uh, a friend of mine uh, by the name of Tikio Sam, who some of you might know him uh, here on YouTube. Uh, he's a buddy of mine, we hang out quite a lot, we, we, uh, we film videos together, uh, we go, he comes with me when I go game hunting and things like that. Um, he brought over like a metric ton of games to my apartment, just uh, stuff for like PlayStation, PS2, Xbox, things like that that he had to unload, N64, bunch of stuff. He dropped it off over here and with the intention that at some point in the future we can uh, do some game streaming together, which I thought was a, you know, a fun idea. Um, so I picked out one game from all the stuff he dropped off that I wanted to talk about because 
Uh, one of the things he dropped off was an original Xbox console, which had a, a bunch of games. Um, but he also dropped off a copy of Jet Set Radio Future for me. Um, so this game is fantastic. I'm a huge fan of the original Jet Set Radio on the Dreamcast and Jet Set Radio Future as well uh, on the Xbox. Uh, actually, when I first got my Xbox way, way back in the day, it was because Jet Set Radio Future and I think Sega GT? Or it was some racing game, but they came bundled with the console that holiday season. Um, so I had to have my Jet Set Radio. Love this game. Uh, you know, beautiful cell shaded graphics. Very fun, uh, you know, inline skating and going, uh, uh, gameplay, exploring the whole, you know, um, uh, sort of fictional city of Tokyo To. Uh, cool soundtrack. Um, the graffiti in this one simplified. Basically, you just hit the trigger button however many times is necessary to finish the, uh, the tag. Uh, so you don't really mess with the whole. Um, uh, sort of me me uh, the uh, stick like designs like moving the stick all around and everything just hit the hit the tag button and that's it you're good um, so Jet Set Radio Future awesome game um, hadn't played it in a very long time so super happy to have that um, next up a uh, game for the Famicom disk system that I found uh, at a hard off in Hamura and uh, I picked it up just because it looked cute and it had like uh, it was like super pristine co condition but this is a Kokona world and this is an overhead, um, I guess you could call it like a little adventure game, sort of Zelda-esque in its execution, um, but it's, it's like uh, plays much slower than that, and it, it's much more cutesy, and uh, um, it, it's uh, an interesting game, I, I'll give it that. For the time it was made, it, it's quite interesting, it's very adorable, but uh, it doesn't hold a candle to Zelda. Uh, but like I said, I picked this up in pristine condition, so the manual is like super crisp and has all the stickers and like little punch cards and everything like that. And this is one of those games like if you're gonna pick it up just like for your collection, um, it's it's great because you, the condition it's in is exactly how you want it to be. Now you can, you know, play it, enjoy it, and then shelve it and uh, let it sit and collect dust and deteriorate. Um, but Kokona World for the Famicom Disk System, um, you know, fun, cute little uh, adventure game for the. Uh, again for the Famicom disc system, like a broken record here. Um, yeah, picked that up at a hard off. Pretty cool. Next up, let me. I gotta put my coffee down for these. Um, I found all of these together. Um, so this stack of Game Gear games, um, I found a whole bunch of boxed Game Gear games uh, bundled together again at a hard off in Hamura, and in particular, they had a bunch of Sonic games. So I picked up all of these boxed in really good condition. So there's Sonic and Tails 2, uh, Sonic Labyrinth, which is cool, I never played that, and then both of these Sonic Drift games. Um, so I really wanted to uh, pick these up just because they were pretty cheap. They were like 15, 15 20 bucks a piece for um, boxed Game Gear games. Very rarely do I come across Game Gear. Um, and when I do come across them, it's never, never boxed and never in a good condition like this. Um, so I wanted to pick these up, um, probably though not so much for myself. I, um, I, I want to play these because I haven't played any of the Sonic Game Gear games, but also I get uh, requests for Game Gear, which I'm usually not able to fulfill because again, I don't really come across Game Gear all that much. I guess it just wasn't that popular in Japan. Um, but these games look pretty cool, so I'll probably give them a try, and then afterwards, instead of just letting them sit and collect dust on the shelf, uh, these will probably go into packages and uh, head out to some people around the world. So, um, but yeah, nice stack of uh, boxed Game Gear games. Very cool. Uh, cannot complain about that. Uh, next up, two games uh, I'll go ahead and uh, bundle together here, because they are a couple of Konami's Deluxe Pack uh, shoot 'em up collections for the Saturn. So there was the Twin B Deluxe Pack, and then there's also the Salamander Deluxe Pack and the Gradius Deluxe Pack. Um, so Gradius comes with the original uh, arcade version of Gradius and Gradius 2. And the Salamander Pack comes with Salamander, Life Force, and Salamander 2. Uh, so that's great. So these are, um, you know, a great value for you if you're a Konami shooter fan, which I am. I'm a huge fan of Gradius and Salamander, things like that. And these are like these really great, you know, I guess arcade perfect conversions, if you will. Um, Sega Saturn shooters, always great. So, yeah, Twin B Deluxe Pack, very cool. But uh, I'm more, 
uh, into this uh, yeah, Gradius Salamander. That's more my speed. Um, so I was very happy to pick up uh, both of these Gradius and Salamander Deluxe Packs. Gradius, I think, was... This was like 20 some odd dollars, I think, for this with uh, exchange rate. Um, the uh, the um, Salamander Deluxe Pack, though, was a bit more than that. Probably closer to 50 bucks. But uh, what can I say? Love it. Love these games. So if they're bundled together and they're on the Saturn, it's a great console for shoot 'em ups. Why not go ahead and pick that up? Uh, speaking of Saturn shoot 'em ups, got another copy of Layer Section. Um, this is one of my favorite Saturn shooters. And this is a game that's been in and out of my collection uh, a number of times, um, mostly because it's one that people really like. And so when people come to me wanting Sega Saturn games, this is one that's always like a surefire hit with everyone. Because it's a great shoot 'em up. It's simple but very fun, challenging, beautiful graphics, a great soundtrack. So it's just an all around amazing game. And. It's still pretty damn cheap, especially by Saturn shooter standards. This copy I actually picked up for, I want to say, with exchange rate, it was probably about 25 bucks. So this is one of those games, at least for the time being, I know that if it leaves the collection, it can just as easily come back into the collection because it's not very expensive. And uh, it's no wonder that it's a pretty common request for me because it is very good. Um, but I gotta be careful with how many copies of this I ship out. I don't want to contribute to the price is skyrocketing on it, which I hope they never do. But Layer Section, amazing game for the Saturn, great shooter, and still pretty damn affordable. Sticking with the Sega Saturn, I got uh, Fantastic Pinball, Q Tenkai. Uh, this is another game that uh, I've had in my collection uh, several times. It's a really great video pinball game made by Technosoft. Technosoft, better known for you know their shoot 'em ups like uh, Thunder Force things like that, but they made lots of games in other genres, they made beat-em-ups and uh, fun things like that, and they did a really great job with this, uh, uh, call it like fantasy video pinball, but it's really great, lots of um, little objectives to complete and like boss battles to do and everything if you want to like clear the board, lots of little different characters to choose from, and a nice fantasy setting, really great like cute 90s-esque anime designs, and if you like video pinball, which I do, um, then you will love Q Tenkai because it's a lot of fun and again one that's still pretty damn affordable So it's in and out of the collection all the time and again It's another one that's like a big hit with import collectors because it is affordable and it's fun You know a lot of people who are collecting Japanese imports don't really have like much of a command of the Japanese language So they stick to the things like the shoot 'em ups the fighting games uh, Things like that which is why some of those can get really expensive because everybody can play them um, but stuff like this is also really popular uh, with uh, import collectors because it's really easy to pick up and play without any kind of command of the Japanese language. It's pinball. It couldn't be any simpler. Uh, but Q Tenkai, great game. Uh, excuse me, I need a little bit of a coffee break. Up next, also on the Sega Saturn, fantastic fighting game. This is X-Men Children of the Atom, which uh, I believe Marvel's first one-on-one -on -one fighter no, Capcom's first one-on-one -on -one fighter using Marvel characters. They did a fantastic job. I love Children of the Atom. Uh, the roster is not huge. I think it's like 10 characters, but it's like 10 like great characters, like you know, your essentials. Uh, you got Wolverine and Cyclops. You got Storm. You got Omega Red. Uh, you got uh, Juggernaut Silver Samurai, the Sentinel. So that's just awesome. And then your final boss is Magneto, and he is... Oh boy, he's he's a real irritant in this game. Uh, if you play as Magneto in like the, some of the later like Marvel versus games or something, you might have forgotten that he was the final boss in Children of the Atom, and uh, he can definitely stomp your balls into oblivion. Um, but this is just a fantastic game, um, really great gameplay. Graphics are awesome. I love some of the stage designs in here. The character designs are great. Great soundtrack. I mean, really good stuff. Um, so Children of the Atom. This is another one that uh, is not so terribly expensive. Um, a lot of the uh, Marvel fighting games, I mean, they're getting up, they're starting to get up there. Children of the Atom is one that you can still find for like under $30. So if you're a Saturn import collector and you're looking at some of the, the fighting games for the Sega Saturn, Children of the Atom is one of the cheaper ones and it's it's great. I think um, most people would uh, would stick, you know, stand behind me when I say that. Uh, Children of the Atom is a great game. You could say that they improved things when they moved on to like X-Men versus Street Fighter and stuff. 
yeah, that's true, but this is still a fantastic fighter that uh, I think any 2D fighting fan would be happy with. And another one, again, that's like in and out of the collection all the time um, because it's a common request and it's one that I can pick up on the cheap. So anytime I get that itch, I need to play some Children of the Atom, just run down to the store, pick up a copy, 20 bucks, well spent. Um, next up, the last game uh, for the Saturn that I picked up uh, recently. Um, this, a game that was released in the US but it's uh, very expensive there, kind of, I think it's it's hundreds of dollars or something. Another one that you can buy here for like 30 bucks or less, uh, Guardian Heroes. Um, by Treasure, this game is uh, pretty pretty common in Japan to come across, actually. If you go to like Sudagaya's or Trader or any of the, the sort of bigger game shops, you can easily come across copies of Guardian Heroes for like 3,000 yen, which is under 30 bucks, um, which is well worth that. This is a fantastic beat-em-up. Lots of fun, great fantasy setting. Treasure always made good stuff. Um, so they take, you know, your uh, pretty typical side-scrolling beat-em-up, add in this multi-plane system where you can jump back and forth between different planes on the, the battlefield, and you can play multiplayer. I believe you can have, like, up to, uh, how many? Up to six players with this game. Insanity. Pure insanity. Treasure, what were you thinking? Uh, but up to six players in this game. Um, just super fun, like nice graphics, character designs, uh, soundtrack, everything. You know Treasure. You know if you're playing a Treasure game, you're playing something that's quality. So Guardian Heroes, super great game. Again, another one I get a lot of requests for because the US version is very expensive. The Japanese version is very inexpensive. It's very easy to come by. And, again, you don't really need any command of the Japanese uh, language to play this. It's just right out of the box. You're ready to go. You're ready to start having fun. And uh, Guardian Heroes for the Sega Saturn. Just a great game. Uh, can't complain about that at all. Um, I have two more pickups here. Uh, first up, something for the PC Engine CD. Um, again, something that's sort of in and out of the collection a lot are the East games. Because they've become more popular, people, you know, as they become more aware of like these uh, uh, um, series. Uh, thanks in part to Mr. Happy Console Gamer being such a huge East fan and doing his, I don't know how many videos he's done on the series. Um, but East 3, um, this, I think I picked this up, uh, I can't even remember where, it might have been Sudagaya, but I think I picked it up for like $7 or something like that. Very inexpensive. All of the East games on the PC Engine, um, East 1 and 2, East 3, East 4, they're all very inexpensive and they're all very fun. East 3 uh, in particular, um, different from the other ones on the console, the others are top-down action adventure games. This one, a side-scrolling action game, a very simple, uh, pretty short game as well, but it's fun and um, the soundtrack is awesome. Uh, the EC, you know, they're not like super graphically impressive games, um, but I do love the character designs. They're kind of classic at this point, you know, Adol and Dogi and stuff. Um, but you got like one town to visit where you can go buy all your stuff and then leave, go to the dungeons, um, sort of grind, level up, go buy more stuff, go back, and, a lot of back and forth, um, but not a very long game. You can probably beat it in like, I don't know, uh, a day, just uh, if you got a day to uh, spare on a game, just sit down and play some East 3 and have some fun with it. Um, but yeah, fun game. Um, again, nice visuals, great character designs, great gameplay, really great soundtrack. All of these East games have really fantastic music. And again, it's super inexpensive. It's like seven or eight bucks, and you've got yourself a copy of East 3 on the PC Engine CD. Can't argue with that. Uh, yeah, so uh, East 3 PC Engine CD. Uh, great game, uh, one that uh, I've picked up countless times, and last but not least, one I don't come across quite as often, uh, so I definitely want to pick it up. Again, going along with that, those Gradius and uh, Salamander Deluxe Packs, I got Gradius 3 and 4 for the PS2. Um, so this is a compilation. You get Gradius 3 and Gradius 4, again, arcade versions of these great games. Gradius 3 is... Um, has been for a long time my favorite Gradius game, thanks mostly to how much I played it on the SNES back in the day. And even though the SNES version is plagued with slowdown, like the entire game plays slow, uh, I don't care. I just, I love that game. And then if you play with the SA1 chip and all the slowdown is taken away, it becomes like, you know, a monster. It's a beast. It uh, becomes a much more difficult game. Um, but anyway, love Gradius 3. Uh, Gradius 4 is awesome as well. It's a really great game, updated, you know, you can see the big jump up in graphics and things. 
they're going for a little more like quasi like 3d type stuff whereas uh gradius 3 you know good old classic uh 2d sprite gradius um but we've got basically the arcade versions of both of these games they're both amazing again i like i said before huge fan of gradius huge fan of salamander basically any konami shoot 'em up uh, i'm gonna have a lot of fun with it um, so, you know, just picking this up that afternoon in Hamura, coming home that evening with a couple of beers, sit back, relax, and play some Gradius 3 and 4. Uh, that's a good night for me. Um, so, yeah, Gradius 3 and 4 on the PS2. Fantastic stuff. There you go. And uh, that's all for today. A uh, bunch of games, big stack of games. And there's, like, more over in the next room. Like I said, Sam brought over a lot of games. So we got, kind of have to like sort through them and everything, pick out all the good stuff you know that we uh, might be streaming in the future, um, and more games over there. Uh, sometimes I share like pictures of the uh, the big box o games that I have here in the apartment, filled with games that um, eventually get packaged up and shipped out to patrons for the most part. Uh, in places like you know North America, so U.S. and uh, Canada and uh, the U.K., Germany, uh, Guam. Uh, the Netherlands, uh, all over the place. So I'm uh, every month I'm shipping out just like tons and tons of games. So I'm like really hustling, picking up lots of games, literally picking up like hundreds of games a month. Um, and with that, that many games coming and going, uh, you know, you need to take a little time and uh, enjoy some of those games for yourself. So uh, especially now that I got a little uh, summer break, a little break from work, um, I've been trying to do that, trying to do the game hunting thing, trying to do the YouTube thing but also making sure I take a little time to actually enjoy the games um, because that, that can be kind of a, a thing. People get caught up in the buying of games and the collecting of games and the selling of games that they never play the damn games. Um, so I have, as best I can, been trying to avoid that. I don't want to uh, be one of those people that just has the games and they're the, you know just changing hands and stuff. A reseller, if you will, I want to remain a gamer first and foremost. Um, so I have been doing that. I've been enjoying these games. been enjoying uh, taking stuff off the shelf after getting moved into the, the apartment, getting all my consoles and TV and everything set up. Um, just at the end of the night, after the end of a long day, making time to play some games. And uh, that's kind of the beauty of having a YouTube channel where part of it is game hunting. Is that hunting the games, I'm picking up games for myself. I'm picking up games for other people. I'm creating my YouTube content. I'm kind of doing everything all... Uh, at the same time and then at the end of the night I get to come home with all those games I bought that day and crack open a beer and test test them out you know all that stuff and most of that stuff I send out I get to test it first so I buy all those super fun games and before they go out in the mail lucky me I get to test them and play them and uh, it's a lot of fun uh, anyway um, everybody thanks for watching got any comments about any of these games uh, let me know uh, any big pickups for you recently let me know in the comments and uh, that'll do it. I'm going to finish off this coffee. I'm going to turn off this camera. And then I'm going to get back to playing some games. I actually picked up, I didn't show it in this video, but I, I never played any of the Dragon Ball Xenoverse games. So I picked up the Switch version of Xenoverse 2. Haven't started playing it yet. Um, but uh, about to get into that as soon as I shut off this camera. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed my anarchic ramblings. And until next time, I'll see you then. Goodbye.